Hello dear viewers, this is Gary, the AI voice, speaking to you as Buddy from Towns Narrator. Since Buddy began his exploration of the cosmos, he has become interested in current news about the universe. Today, Buddy from Town is sharing news about scientists who have found another possible exomoon beyond our solar system. Kepler 1708bi appears to be a giant moon orbiting a Jupiter-sized planet, thousands of light years from Earth. In Jonathan O'Callaghan's article, entitled, Astronomers Have Found Another Possible Exomoon Beyond Our Solar System, published on January 13, 2022, at scientificamerican.com, astronomers announced they have found a second plausible candidate for a moon beyond our solar system, an exomoon, orbiting a world nearly 6,000 light-years from Earth. The findings appear in Nature Astronomy. Called Kepler 1708bi, O'Callaghan explains, the moon appears to be a gas-dominated object, slightly smaller than Neptune, orbiting a Jupiter-sized planet around a sun-like star, which is an unusual, but not wholly unprecedented planet-moon configuration. O'Callaghan notes, this potential exomoon's existence was first hinted at in 2018, during an examination of archival data by David Kipping, of Columbia University, one of the discoverers of Kepler-1625bi, and his colleagues. The team analyzed transit data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope of 70 so-called cool giants, gas giants, such as Jupiter and Saturn, that orbit relatively far from their stars, with years consisting of more than 400 Earth days. In the article, Jonathan O'Callaghan explains, that the team looked for signs of transiting exomoons orbiting these worlds, seeking additional dips in light for many shadowy lunar companions. Then, the researchers spent the next few years vetting one potential exomoon candidate after another, and finding each better explained by other phenomena, with a single exception, Kepler 1708bi. It's a moon candidate we can't kill, Kipping says. For four years we've tried to prove this thing was bogus. It passed every test we can imagine, the magnitude of the relevant smaller, additional dip in light points to the existence of a moon about 2.6 times the size of Earth. O'Callaghan notes, the nature of the transit method means that only the radius of worlds can be directly gleaned, not their mass. But this one size suggests a gas giant of some sort. It's probably in the mini-Neptune category, Kipping says, referring to a type of world that, despite not existing in our solar system, is present in abundance around other stars. The planet, this putative mini-Neptune moon orbits, the Jupiter-sized Kepler-1708b completes an orbit of its star every 737 days, at a distance 1.6 times that between Earth and the Sun. Presuming the candidate is genuinely a moon, it would orbit the planet once every 4.6 Earth days, at a distance of more than 740,000 kilometers, nearly twice the distance our own moons orbit around Earth. Jesse Christensen, of the California Institute of Technology, says, the fact that only this single candidate emerged from the analysis of 70 cool giants could suggest that large gaseous moons are not super common in the cosmos. The apparently large size of this exomoon, compared with its host planet, is surprising, Kipping says in the article, but not wholly unexpected. Kepler 1625b, the planet that the previous exomoon candidate Kepler 1625bi purportedly orbits, appears to have a similar, if slightly larger configuration. If both these moons truly exist, that could be telling us something very interesting about possible planet-moon configurations in the galaxy, namely that giant worlds could host equally giant moons. That in itself, raises questions about the genesis of such worlds. It is unlikely that such a large moon could directly form an orbit around a planet, with the planet more likely to sweep up any potential satellite birthing material, suggesting another origin story is more likely. Christensen explains, one scenario is this moon got captured by the planet as the planetary system was forming. Early planetary systems are quite violent, chaotic places. We see examples of capture in our own solar system, for instance, Triton, one of Neptune's moons. We think that was captured. So, we know that this can happen, we just hadn't scaled it up to the idea that a Jupiter-sized planet could capture a Neptune-sized moon, says Christensen. In the article, Jonathan O'Callaghan notes, 
not everyone is sold on this moon's supposed existence. Rene Heller, of the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research, in Göttingen, Germany, says he is not sure that the transit signal the team has seen is the result of a moon. It doesn't convince me, Heller says. Instead, he adds, the dip in light could simply be the result of natural variations on the star, such as sunspots we see on our own sun, passing across its surface at the same time as the planetary transit. Though, O'Callaghan notes, Kipping and his team, for their part, say they have ruled out such a possibility because the dip supposedly caused by the moon began before the planet started to pass in front of the star. Laura Kradberg of the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy, in Heidelberg, Germany, says she wouldn't call it a slam dunk yet, but the result is absolutely worth following up, to try and see another transit from the purported moon. We will not be able to do so immediately, however. Given the long orbit of the planet, it, and its possible moon, will not transit again until 2023, meaning we would have to wait until then to try and spy the exomoon again, Kipping says. There are more than 200 moons in our solar system, and they have an impressive array of variation. Moons are common, says Jesse Christensen. In our solar system, almost everything has a moon. I am very confident that moons are everywhere in the galaxy, she continues. The only problem is finding them. We can look for exoplanets in a number of ways, such as spying the dip in light they produce as they move in front of their star, an occurrence known as a transit, or getting a telltale glimpse of their gravitational tug on their host star. Finding exomoons, which are by nature decidedly smaller than the planets they orbit, is much more difficult, however. They're just so small, Christensen says. O'Callaghan notes, the James Webb Space Telescope could be used to perform some sort of survey to look for exomoons. In the way its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, has made huge strides in exoplanet science. JWST might prove to be defined by its contribution to exomoons. Kipping says, my team, right now, is planning out what an exomoon survey strategically would look like for Webb. It will be the first time in human history that will be possible. Jonathan O'Callaghan's article highlights the important reasons to look for exomoons. Once we start finding exomoons in abundance, we will start to get a true handle on their variability and importance. Tides from our own moon, for example, may have played a role in Earth's habitability, leading to the evolution of life in tidal pools. The study of exomoons may tell us more about the planet formation process, too. If we want to have a comprehensive understanding of how planet formation works, we need to understand moons, Kradberg says. Exomoons themselves may also represent prime targets in the hunt for life. Given they can seemingly range in size from small to Earth-sized and beyond, it is reasonable to assume that some rocky exomoons may orbit gas giant planets within their star's habitable zone, where liquid water can exist. Complications are noted though. A moon around a giant planet would experience a considerable gravitational push and pull from that larger world, which, in extreme circumstances, such as those of Jupiter's moon, Io, can result in intense volcanic activity. The radiation from gas giants, such as Jupiter, can be deadly, too. And such systems can have peculiar characteristics. If you're lined up right, you'd have your day and night from your rotation, but an additional day-night cycle from going behind the planet, Christensen says. There are almost certainly rocks of the right temperature around gas giants. Whether or not they're habitable is an open question, and something a lot of people are excited about. Christensen says, Kepler-1708b is not such a world, but it is another exciting frontrunner at the start of what might become an eventual era of exomoon science. This concludes Buddy's Space News today. If you would like to follow along to see Buddy from town become Buddy of Singularity, please click subscribe, and a like would be appreciated. Until next time dear viewers, keep looking up and looking back, way way back.